2020, friends, here's a good thing to come out of 2020. It was a banner year for pet adoptions across Canada. Look at those puppies. To celebrate National Puppy Day, we are going to have an expert answer your questions. Karen Lyle, CEO, certified dog trainer and behavior coach, is here to answer all of our dog pound puppy questions this morning, okay? You guys have been writing in. Good morning. How are you, Karen? I'm well, thanks. How are you? We're good. Uh, let's start with uh, the, the question of separation anxiety with pets. Look, people are going to be going back to work a lot more here over the next little while, hopefully, with vaccines kicking in. How do you prevent your pet from having separation anxiety, considering you, most people have been home for the last 12 months? Yeah. Yeah, it's a really common issue right now, for sure. But, you know, it, it's always existed, but now there's definitely an, an uptick in the cases. So, the best thing that we can do is not just stay home all the time, go out and take walks by yourself or with your family and leave for really short periods of time. The biggest, most important piece of the puzzle though is gonna be monitoring your dog. So having some sort of camera set up where you can check through your smartphone to see how your dog is faring. If your dog is showing signs of stress and anxiety like destruction or barking, whining, howling or scratching at the door, even you know peeing on the floor then we've got to make those times a lot shorter and work our way up from a much more uh tiny increment mm, wean them off it okay uh here's a question from like a diamond this is our bull mastiff mix tucker question for the trainer how do you get a dog to stop barking when somebody comes to the door because that gets annoying well, right it is and it's something that we actually train our dogs to do they don't really do this naturally so we get all excited, the doorbell rings and we run to the door and say, oh, Aunt Sally is here. And then Aunt Sally comes in and we get all excited and hug them. And the dog goes, oh, cool, this is our routine. <laughs> so they start barking at the door to alert us to it. So the best thing you can do is start creating a new pattern. So put a little sign on your door that says, please, please be patient, dog in training. Hmm. And then when someone knocks on the door, you run straight to your dog's bed or crate or wherever you want them to go. And I want you to feed that spot some treats, four or five treats in a row. Okay. And if you can get this routine going, your dog goes, doorbell rings, I go to my bed, right? Ah. And then over time, then you can start building into behaviors like a downstay and things like that. But management's the biggest thing. So I often say to people in the beginning, maybe teach that new routine, but use a crate or a baby gate or something. So they're not learning to charge to the door. Okay. Isolation has been a big topic uh, over the last 12 months as well in a lot of different ways for a dog. You know, when you're isolated, when you're not socializing, how, how damaging can that be for a pooch? It's, it's quite damaging. Um, unfortunately, in the last year, we've seen a lot of puppies who have been raised without the typical socialization classes, for example, or the ability to go and meet other dogs and people. So now that we're getting a little bit closer, you know, outside, or maybe we've learned to use longer leashes, um, the dogs are a little bit nervous or overly excited. So we do have to create really positive experiences for them. It's not just about exposure. Exposure is nothing. It's really, really neutral. It's about creating a positive experience. So your dog or your puppy sees another dog or a person, and you're going to happy talk and maybe feed a little snack. So I'm always using their meal times outside in a pouch, maybe increasing the value of that food with some boiled chicken or something like that and creating positive associations just like Pavlov, right? Yeah. Bell ring, food happens. Positive Dog reinforcement. Shows up, food happens. Jennifer, yeah. I want to get this in real quick. Jennifer, sorry, Karen, Jennifer writes in. This is our best friend, Brownie. She's eight months. My question is, how do you get her to stop eating poo at the park? Oh, no. I know. It's Look at her it's face. It's the most charming thing. And no one wants to kiss that dog. So, um, you know, right now it's all about management. You know, it's an all you can eat buffet. So if your dog is off leash and there's poop, it's a minefield. Ew. You know, all you can do is avoid the dog park, hoping that this passes maybe in a couple weeks. If it doesn't, you just have to work on your recall like it's your job. You know, call them to you, reinforce them so heavily with whatever they love, ball, food, you know, bum scratches, whatever it is. <laughs> Such a weird thing that they do, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, the, oh. the less said, the better on my end on that. Uh, CanineEducationAcademy.com if you want more information. Karen, happy Thanks, National Karen. Puppy Day to you and yours. We appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. Same to you. Thank you so much. Coming up next, Steve was sitting down with somebody awesome. He's got a couple it's of guests really coming up. To, a new digital campaign is helping amplify the voices of Canadian BIPOC and LGBTQ2S plus musicians. We speak with two of the feature artists right after this.